Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here. If you're here watching the replay, welcome and stick around because today we're talking about the fifth dating strategy that will lead you to real love, no matter what's happening in the world, because obviously things are looking a little different right now. And these are strategies, pillars, commitments. These are the things that I know that are the foundation for opening you up to allow real love to show up in your life. So if you haven't seen the other four days, no big deal. All you have to do is just scroll in the feed and you can find the other days. So if you haven't, if we haven't met, first of all, click up top in the subject there is a permission to show your name on facebook so if you haven't done that go ahead and do that and let me know who you are and where you're from um, maybe even a fun fact about you and put it in the comments so that i can come back and meet you um after the broadcast but i just wanted to share with you these five dating strategies because um, these are things that I actually share in my book, Wake Up and Smell the Loser, How to Stop Attracting Jerks and Attract the One Who Adores You. And if you don't have a copy of that, go to my website, BigHappyLove.com, and you can get it. And um, it's a guide that I put together that really shows you that there really are only two ways to date. And one works and one doesn't. And guess where the majority of people are in their dating strategy. It's the one that doesn't work. So these five commitments are kind of where I bring people to that help you to kind of do a check and consider all of the things that truly what I see matters with my private clients. And for me, um, these are really the core elements that have to be present if you wanted to create a really phenomenal love story. So um, if, uh, if you haven't heard me speak before, I mean, what I'm talking about is not just how to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend or how to, you know, what's going to make someone like you. This is really about you calling in the most authentic and extraordinary relationship. And this is why I like to label it unicorn love. Which way am I pointing? Unicorn love because it's the kind of love you never thought could exist, but it does. Um, it just takes up-leveling your skills in a way to receive something different. And let's face it, most of the time, a big problem for people is, especially women, is that it's challenging to receive. I mean, I know I still, you know, have to like invite that for myself over and over again. It's not something that was natural to me. I was consistently an overgiver, a people pleaser. If you relate to that, post in the comments. <laughs> um, so, you know, today I wanted to share with you the fifth dating strategy. And um, I'm just going to briefly touch on the other four. I mean, the first one, I talk a lot about, you know, how you kind of get to that decision to say, yes, I'm having this. I'm having meaningful, loving relationships in my life. I'm having that special person. I'm having that love relationship. The second one is a, is about really creating that phenomenal vision of love. And this is not just, this isn't making a vision board. This is beyond vision board stuff. This is about the energy, space, and consciousness that actually magnetically draws in a partner. So Day one and day two, if you haven't seen, go in the feed, check it out. If you're just joining, please post your name in the comments so I can say hi to you. Um, yay. Hi, Amber. So glad you're here. Um, then the third one is about choice. It's understanding and 
acknowledging how you actually get to create more happiness, joy, and ease in your life just by your choice. Um, and, you know, if it's not feeling good, if it, if what you're experiencing in your life is not fun for you, what else is possible? So it's really about choosing those things that really align with the kind of love that you want to have in your life. And then yesterday I shared with you a special practice on being in love now, like how you connect to that. And that is an experiential thing you want to maybe go back to day four and check it out and play with. So today, you know, our focus really is around what I am labeling. Uh, I'm labeling it. I actually came up with a name and now I'm spacing it out. What was it? It's, um, it is, oh shoot. Anyway, well, it's a judgment. It's a judgment of, um, oh, it's a, a judgment bias. That's what I was calling it in my head. Um, the judgment bias that I recognize that stops people from actually creating something greater. So dating strategy number five is really that space of when we think, okay, you know what? Um, you know, I shouldn't have to like do anything about this. I shouldn't have to um, put forth effort. Like if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If I'm supposed to be in a love relationship, it's just going to happen. I used to say that all the time. Like, um, so how many of you can relate to feeling that, you know what, it just should just happen. You know, I think a lot of this comes from the fact that we don't actually learn about relationships in our upbringing, in our schooling, in education. And it seems quite hilarious to me when you really think about it it's like oh my god that what is the like foundation of everything that we create and it really is relationship relationship is all there is i mean maybe you've gone to a church camp or y camp or something where you learn a little bit about it i i do feel like what i learned about relationship the first things i learned about relationship like uh officially was through going to camp all, every summer. We learned about friendship. We learned about how to, you know, be there to support someone. But other than that, we're learning about relationship just by like our kid brain picking up things from looking around, you know, looking around, seeing our parents, seeing the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I... I'm a big Brady Bunch fan. Uh, all roads lead to a Brady Bunch story for me, really. Um, so like all of the different ways. I mean, I remember growing up in my generation and feeling so unworthy and so unattractive and so not good enough because I'm reading Seventeen magazine. You know, I'm seeing all these girls who are like perfect models that, you know, then we decide, okay, well, I guess I'm not attractive. And, you know, if that's, that's what men want, then I don't have that. So there's so many different influences that keep us from actually thinking we can do something about our love life, do something about relationships. So this dating strategy number five is really specifically this, and listen up. It's let go, letting go of the idea that there is something wrong with you if you need help finding love. 
And I say this because I find that a lot of people have shame around their relationship failures or things not working out or, you know, not getting into a long-term relationship or whatever the thing is that hasn't or has and didn't work out, like all of the things that create some drama and trauma in our space around relationship, which is a big deal. And the fact is that because we haven't been, um, because most of us live under this belief that uh, we should just know how to do this. We're human. This is just what should come naturally. If we are living under the belief of, oh, this should just happen. This should just come naturally. And then secretly we're like, oh my God, I really must be broken. There must be something wrong with me that it's not happening. It's not working. I keep screwing it up or the people I attract, like, when we have that going, there's just so much underlying resistance, pain, and blocks to love. So here I want to say, let go of it. Let go of it. Because in any other areas of our life, if we want to learn math, we get a math tutor. If we want to buy a house, we hire a realtor. If we want to figure out our financial security, we we reach out to a financial advisor. Like if we want eyebrows that look cool, we ask someone to shape them for us. We even have people walking our dogs for us. Like there are infinite numbers of ways that we have zero stigma around receiving help. And so if you're here, I want to celebrate you because you're here because you have a an open mind. You are considering, okay, what else is possible? And that really is the dating strategy number five is let go of the idea that there's something wrong with you if you need help finding love and receive that support. Like get to the source of the not good enough, the, you know, fear of getting hurt, the, you know, oh, maybe I'm too much and I should tone it down. Or, you know, why did I attract that person? Oh, wow. The, what is that about? Like all of the things that come into our field or even the things that say, well, it's probably too late or, you know, they're not any good ones left. Like all of the reasons that come into our head about why we can't have love are not helpful. So they're just symptoms of something that wants to change for you because we are here to connect. And what I know is that having that person by your side that can say, you know, hey, we got this, no matter what's happening in the world, being able to have the skills to deepen a connection with a person and get through conflict and communicate needs and um, have that intimacy and sweetness that comes from, you know, really understanding relationship in a whole new way is super powerful. And yet our society expects us to wing it, just to wing it. If you've read my book, Wake Up and Smell the Loser, How to Stop Attracting Jerks and Attract the One Who Adores You, long title, um, then you'll, you'll learn about the two different kinds of dating. And one is just status quo. It's the winging it. It's, you know, reacting and feeling sort of fearful or like trying to figure out like what's going to work when when you get into a space of you know really what i define as being the unicorn love dater <laughs> or i used to call it the love superstar 
that, you know, you're actually playing into love. You know, that's something I say over and over again. You can play into love. And playing into love does take a consciousness. It takes a consciousness to actually be with yourself in a way that is kind and present and has that intimacy and vulnerability that so many of us, you know, when you're sensing a love story in your heart, it's actually holding a lot of those qualities, whether you can name it or not. There's something about being received and seen and heard and understood and celebrated and this like, uh, I am the answer to someone's prayer and this person is the answer to mine and we get to co-create together. Like that whole space is so magical. And that's really why I'm on this planet <laughs> is to help more and more singles who have struggled with, you know, all of these things I've struggled with and I've seen it as a societal challenge for women that we get to change it. And you know what? Now is the time. Like it's not really the planet is calling for love. We're, we're actually experiencing right now how important connection is. And, you know, I know that it can be hard to feel that isolation and feel alone when we're in quarantine or, or lockdown, whatever you want to call it. And it's actually showing where we need to go. So if you are noticing that, wow, it would be really nice to have someone by my side. It would be really nice if I we had two incomes. It would be really nice to know someone could just be present with me. And, and how fun would it be to be with someone who gets me? Like all of the things that maybe are hard to say out loud because, you know, perhaps there's still a fear that, well, what if it doesn't happen? And I get that. But I want to invite you to be super honest with yourself right now and, and really make that decision. And that it's basically like, well, what will it take to create phenomenal love with total ease and when you can open up to that question and receive even an opportunity to look at okay well what has been keeping me from it that's something that if you want to look at I can do that with you so that's the good news this is this is the time when you, you know, can ask for expert support. I offer a complimentary happy and love strategy session. This really is for people who are super like clear. You know what? Yes, this resonates with me. Yes, I do want to create something beyond everything I've seen before. I want to create that kind of unicorn love that's the relationship where it's truly the right relationship for you. It's the right relationship for you, which isn't going to look like anyone else's relationship. And it's the honoring of everything that is you, that works for you and celebrates you because your person is also looking for that. And when you can sit down and have someone, because I've seen, I've, talk to hundreds and hundreds of women about relationship and studied for the last 10 years so many different modalities and practices to help people create change in their life but also to understand what it takes to actually connect with another and create amazing relationships that I can see it really fast and so 
you know, you can wing it on one hand, just wing it and hope something sticks, or you can consciously create. And so I am super happy to be able to um, do that for you and with you. And so when you can get a clear healing strategy, get the tools, get the tips, get the, um, you know, real consciousness that it takes to create something magnificent in your life. These are the same tools that can then ripple into all other areas of your life. But I will say that this is the foundation. You know, when you know how to actually receive love, you can then receive money, you can receive opportunities, you can receive more happiness, joy and ease than ever before. And it starts with, you know, looking at, okay, well, what's been in the way? What are those beliefs, those lies, those insecurities, those fears that continually disrupt, interrupt your peace, interrupt your space of receiving and allowing and creating. And at the beginning of this conversation, I talked about it being sort of a judgment bias. And the reason why I said that is because there's a judgment bias that, okay, um, if you want to buy a house or create a financial future or, or, you know, shape your eyebrows, you just call up those people. You hire a realtor, you hire a financial planner, you, you know, hire an esthetician to do these things. But then when it comes to our love space, we're like, oh, I should have known how I should know how to do that. If it's not happening, it's probably me. You know, I, there's probably something wrong. I should just know if it's going to happen. It's like, so we have this really weird difference. And so I'm here to explode that, release that, change that, because there's no reason why we should treat those differently. It doesn't need to be different. If, if you want to create something phenomenal, that is the time to enlist expert support to get you there. So I've been here for these last five days doing five days of classes just to give you the five core dating strategies, the five commitments you need to make with yourself in order to actually change your space to attract the love that you've always wanted. And this is the fifth one. And it's probably the most important one because any of the things that are keeping you from being able to receive the other ones are these kinds of limitations that, um, you know, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or that you're bad or that you fucked something up. It's not that at all. This is really just what happens when, um, as a human, you know, we have these experiences, we decide different things. Certainly so many of us grew up and our beliefs are shaped around relationship before age seven. So what was happening? What did you, what could a child's brain possibly decide about relationship? There's a lot of things that can be misunderstood. And when you can change this, I know for me, I changed it when I was already 40 and I made a demand that I created something different in my love life. And when I did, I could see all of the ways that I made myself wrong, all of the ways that I felt not good enough, but then too much. So there was like so many things that were functioning 
in limiting my experience of love. And that's what I see so often, well, really with all of my clients, with most women, we have misunderstandings about ourselves, misunderstandings about what it takes to create an amazing relationship. And that's not something to beat yourself up over. This is about oh my God, I'm not alone. This is about, oh, um, yay, there are ways to change this. There's nothing you can't change. So if you looked out at your relationship space and it hasn't been happening the way that you, that would really light you up, light your fire, then guess what? You can change that. So if you want to sit down with me and look at what it is specifically that, you know, we can uncover that kind of core block to love, then look at what is possible from there and then create sort of the next step strategy that would actually lead you to meaningful love. And it seriously does not matter whether we're in lockdown or not because all of these things are about creating connection and this isn't going to be going on forever. And I'm actually seeing even greater uh, dating adventures happening right now than before, because there's a lot less distractions with, with that space. It's really a lot more authentic than it used to be, which is, awesome. And there are a lot more people online than ever before. So that is good news for singles. So um, let's do this in a conscious way. So reach out to me, message me on Facebook. Note in the comments if you would like to set up a time. Uh, email me at macy at bighappylove.com if you'd like. And let's create something amazing. So here's what else I want you to know. If you're new to this community, uh, I'd love to meet you. I want to know, you know, how I can support you, what's happening for you. So please reach out and let me know what's happening for you. Um, you can also join me every Sunday in the Apocalyptic Love Group. This is broadcasting in that group, also in the Big Happy Love, the Playful Path to Love group. Um, but join me in the Apocalyptic Love group to uh, for Unicorn Church every Sunday. This is an amazing, fun community. You'll get um, a some spiritual sparkle, I like to call it. It's all non-conventional gospel text and teachers to just give you an uh, uplifting message for the week. And there's a lot of humor, it's fun. We sing, we meditate, we receive amazing tips and guidance. So join me here uh, on Sunday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. And then next week, I'm thinking I may go live again for some bonus calls to share with you some more. So what are you wanting to know? What do you want to know? If you let me know, then I can guide our programming for that. Otherwise, I just will follow my inspiration. But I'm really so glad you're here. And I'm so glad you're watching right now. And I just want you to know that there's nothing wrong with you. That you know, all of this is figure outable. You know, I felt so broken for so long. And that's what's really inspired me to, to move beyond this. Oh, yay. Love Unicorn Church on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. So, you know, the person that you are, the difference that you be is exactly what your beloved is looking for. So, 
most of the time we have a lot of judgments, a lot of fear, a lot of insecurity that's layered over that, that kind of dumbs down our actual amazing essence, the thing that your person is looking for. So, you know, my goal is to help you really bring out your own unicorn, the unicorn that is you. So come join us at church. Let me know how I can support you. You know, message me in the comments so that I can say hello. And I'm just so glad you're here. So thanks for joining me. Go back and watch all the other days if you haven't. And we'll see you really soon. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for being here.